Also, a DVD with 900 survival and off-grid living documents and the offline home canning how to do everything website all on the DVD. So when you're growing all that food, you know how to can it, store it, preserve it, etc. with all these documents. So thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I hope that you will pick up this package and start learning to be free. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps and freedom is one seed that needs to be planted. Then I'll ring you after. Okay. Hi, this is Christine Joanna Hart Show, and I'm sorry I'm late for the show. Obviously, I am a little bit late, and um, I'm sorry about that. So, um, Christine Joanna Hart, live from London, and I'm. So Sorry I'm late. It's 10 past two and the ads must have gone ahead and we're late for coming on. But um, here we are on and my guest today is Max Spears. So um, we're just going to bring him on straight away, people. And um, gosh, isn't it really weird about the um, differences in the times now with um, the United States? But um, that's how it is. Max, are you there? Oh, Max, are you there? Hopefully you're there. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Um, okay, it's, I was a little bit late, it seems, for the show because um, I missed the adverts for the studio, but um, we're connected up. Um, okay. I, 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 I don't know, I don't know what's, what's gone on, but never mind. We'll go ahead with the show. Um, so, yeah. so, yeah, so um, what's, what's been happening with you this week? Because we had you on... Um, Two was uh, well, yeah, it wasn't last week, it was the week before. Yeah, um, what's been happening with me? I've just been really um, uh, studying and putting things together for the conference that's coming up that I'm going to be doing in Poland. So I'm, I'm sort of doing an overview to start writing a book um, so that they can promote uh, the book with me when I, when I speak in Poland. So I've really been doing not much else apart from research and sort of like uh trying to under go inside of myself and understand um things that i didn't know before N nothing nothing too big to speak of christine oh right right interesting well this week um this week i had a my news is i had a meeting with the bbc um panorama they're doing did they come to you did they come to you to uh, interview you yeah, they did. I met um, I met with a chap called Owen Phillips, and um, we had lunch at a fancy French restaurant in Kew, Ma Cuisine, and um, I basically told him my life story, um, you know, the background, um, how I got into the media, how I ended up working for the News of the World via a boyfriend of mine called Phil Hall, and um, I basically dated him and um, got into journalism that way, ended up working for the News of the World, um, and so we talked about that and basically he wanted um, my background as a private investigator. He wanted to, um, well, he wants to do a panorama. They've done a lot on the phone hacking. He wants to do a panorama on the connection between the phone hacking and MI6. So um, that that's how the intelligence services um, brought in the phone hacking via a chap called John Boyle, who I know, um, who works for Hackly and um, some of the ex-MI6 investigations companies. So. Yeah. That, that's going to be going ahead. But um, interestingly, um, he was kind of homing in on the Daily Mail and stuff, um, stuff I'd done for the Daily Mail because I worked for them for over a decade. Yeah. And also uh, Mazza, Mahmood. And interestingly, Mahmood um, is a top, top guy, worked for the News of the World, did investigations. And I was explaining to him how the News of the World and um, News Corps is a bit like a... Um, cult and the the lower journalists and even some of the editors kind of kept out of the um higher levels and um that that Mazza is interesting that he's got court coming up and he's going on trial for um uh, perverting the course of justice with Talisa 
the um, pop singer that they're throwing him to the wolves. They they're intending on throwing Mazamamid to the wolves, and it's quite interesting because um, he he's a bishop. You know, he was pretty high up, and um, yeah. as Owen was saying, well, he he'll probably throw the rest of them to the to the wolves, and he said, but but nobody will listen to him. He'll just be disgruntled. Which they I'm, use them as fall guys, don't they? They'll they'll yeah. pick. We'll pick one, especially if um, they haven't towed the line, and uh, and then they'll sort of throw them out, like you said, to the wolves. If if the, you know, because they have all this information, they have anybody who's in any of the higher positions in, uh, in any of the religious positions or any of the uh, media positions. They, if you get to a high position, they, the the elite will always have stuff on you. So that if you don't toe the line, then they can um, burn you whenever they want to. So um, that, that doesn't surprise me that they're doing that to him. I just wonder why him in particular, when there's so many others who've done, you know, done those things, why they've picked him. Yeah, I don't know. It's quite interesting. Um, this chap was saying to me, oh, do you know um, he's a psychopath and, you know, this kind of stuff. So they're really, they're really going to go to town and call him, you know, mentally ill and, you know, it's a bit. But maybe he has something to say. Then that's usually the way that it is. If they're doing, if they're trying to assassinate his character, then usually this he has probably has something to say that's worthwhile hearing. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because I did find it shocking that he said, "Oh, he, he, he he's a clinical psychopath." You do know that, don't you? And I thought, well, no. <laughs> he, he he was just really going along with with you know what was going on at the newspaper, which was take people down and target people, target celebrities, target politicians for whatever reason. I would say that the news editor felt so like he was told to do that, though. Somebody somebody had given him orders to do that, though, right? Not really. He he was his own. Ma well, the, the celebrities that he took down and the royals he took down, like he took down Sarah Ferguson, that, yeah. that all came from above. He was told to do that. He didn't think of that. Yeah. Um, mostly he targeted his own race, which was Pakistani. He was always coming to me and saying, oh, let's do a Paki. And, you know, I yeah. used to feel quite confused. I didn't know what to say because he's Pakistani. Yeah. And then one time when I was um, – going to Sylvester Stallone's wedding with him, um, yes. he went as the sheikh and I was supposed to be the sheikh's wife and I turned up dressed in leopard leopard print, a leopard print dress, leopard print pillbox hats and he, he, he said, oh, go and change that. He said, what, you look like a, a, a scummy packy lover and I'm like, what? I was really confused and he said, you strike me as being a packy lover, are you? And I thought, what? I, I thought it was kind of so odd him saying that. that is interesting you know they'll sometimes they'll put placement in um uh to like they'll they, they've done that with Jew with the with jewish people too and black people they'll 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 use somebody from their own uh race to then uh subversively bring down their own race you know um it's, it's happened like many times before a lot of the um like a lot of the high uh jewish uh uh ones who run the entertainment industry and media in the US um, aren't, in fact, Jews in the same way that we think they are um, in, in terms of the religion. They're like, you know, there's, there's the Zionist um, connection to that. So they will be sub subversively sort of subtly bringing down um, Jews while whilst claiming that they are them. So it's, it's not unusual. I've, I've sort of heard this before as well. I oh, right. Interesting. Hmm. But it's interesting that they're going to burn him in that way. I suppose. Do you think what, what, what are the charges? What what are they what are they going to charge him for? Well, the charges are perverting the course of justice with Chalisa, the pop singer. Um, he tried to. I think. Oh, I can't really say much about it because it's yeah. um, sub judice something, <laughs> something about drugs and cocaine and. Okay. Yeah, setting her up, something like that. I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Gosh, I don't know. So, so that that was going on. Also, had an interesting uh, thing about our last show. We were talking about um, Tom Hardy's mother and mm. how I played tarot with her. She came up to me in Waitrose and said, "Oh, Tom's people had heard you doing a podcast about um, doing the tarot with me." And um, I thought, "Well, I don't do podcasts." So I said, "Oh, <laughs> I, I don't do podcasts." Was it the radio? And she said, "Oh, don't worry. She said it doesn't matter." Um, I, I don't care, but Tom's upset, and I, I felt quite 
you know, I felt quite guilty because I thought, well, I didn't remember saying it. And I thought, well, had I, have I said it? And um, well, what, what you, you, I think you said one sentence. I think you said one sentence uh, saying that you had done uh, done a tarot reading or with with his mum. I think that's all I remember. Oh right, right, yeah. interesting. Yeah, well, you know, she she's a she's a fascinating woman. I I met her in a book club, and um, you know, she kind of took me under her wing and um, gave me loads of clothes, um, really beautiful silk dresses and beautiful designer jackets and designer shoes and. Um, you know, she's she's quite interesting. She's like intensely powerful, and um, I always thought she was the the wings behind Tom. You know, mm. and um, yeah, she's she she she's very interesting. She's kind of like a Liz Taylor personality with like loads and loads of strength. And um, I said to her one day about Tom going into politics, and she said, "Oh, you know, that's what he wants to do." So he's mm. like not really aiming at acting. He's sort of you know, that's what he wants to do, like, you know, heal the planet and sort of go into um, politics. But that's the route sometimes that people take, isn't it, Hollywood? And then... Well, they do... Well, that's sort of set up that way because what they do is they get... Um, they'll they'll put actors in, you know, in, in movies and positions of um, where the public sort of fall in love with them. Oh. And then um, th then it's much easier to for, their, for people to then listen to them or they feel much more comfortable listening to somebody that they feel um, has, uh, um, you know been in positions or roles where they've sort of, it, it's it's a manipulation technique and i thought i think like 20 years ago there were people talking about that that was going to happen that they were going to get actors and or musicians to then get into politics that's why dicaprio just won the oscar and i think he tweeted straight away afterwards something to do with um uh, uh the, the, some, something to do with the planet or saving the planet and i think that he's now an envoy a peace envoy peace envoy for um I'm not sure which what he's running for, but he's he's sort of a peace envoy. But they're they're doing it's it's a reversal again because you know these these guys who are if, if they're saying they're a peace envoy, then they're 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 not they're not they're not that at all. I mean, DiCaprio isn't really for the planet in, in truth. He's um he's the other way around. Um so so I mean I I don't want to get personal about these people but anyway um uh, that, that for sure it's much it's much easier for people will fall and listen to actors and actresses and musicians if they're speaking about politics than they will do if they see suits on television just speaking about it because they feel like they already know them. Do you know what I'm saying? Hmm. I I often thought why we here <coughs> in London don't have the same thing going on because we don't have charismatic um charismatic leaders we don't go for that do we i think it would work a, a lot better if we did start going down that route you know yeah yeah um it's just um the intent of the person i mean i mean uh, it, they're obviously not i mean they they're getting told what to do and what to say they're not coming up with these ideas themselves the the actors that are doing it they're not they're not sitting down and thinking okay i want to go and do this i don't think and uh then going and doing it there there's there's somebody above pulling strings to put them in those positions um it's it's an, it's, it's an orchestrated thing and they know like i said before they know full well that the the mass public are going to listen to dicaprio uh, 10,000 times more than they would listen to um john smith in a suit who 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 we don't know who just looks like another clone of another guy we'd seen on the news the other day before um, people are far more likely to listen to and follow somebody they've been watching on tv and movies for 20 years mm -hmm. it's interesting yeah yeah. As long as they're working for the good side, I mean, I don't know about DiCaprio. Um, is he is he a good guy? He's certainly good looking. <laughs> um, I I wouldn't want to call. I don't want to call on what he, what he is and what he is, and I don't think it's my position to do that. But I can say that um, uh, if you have if you win an okay, well, winning an Oscar anyway. If you win an the the Oscar statue and is is symbolic of Osiris. That's what Oscar um, is uh, Osiris, and then the car at the end is like the serpent energy, um, the Kundalini energy. So when you win one of those, it means that you are 
giving uh, like allegiance to um, a certain allegiance to a certain elite uh, way of thinking, uh, the elite way of thinking. You don't just get to win one, and um, as soon as you do, you sort of uh, the you, the position your position of power ri- raises very quickly. Um, so uh, I, you know, I, I'm I'm being very careful as to not to say you know if someone's good or bad because I don't know. But I'm just looking as a, as an overview that generally, if you are in a position where you um, are in movies and television or entertainment, um, you're in that sort of on, on that sort of level, you're probably. Um, not working for the best interests of everybody. I don't know. What, what do you think, Christine? I don't know. I thought it was interesting that, that everyone in the audience, when he got the award, was, was more or less bowing to him. He seemed like, you know, somebody... His name, <laughs> DiCap- Di- DiCaprio, it means Leo of, uh, of Caprice. Um, there's an island off Italy called Caprice. And, he, you know, he's, he's tight with De, uh, De Niro and Scorsese and... Scorsese was um, one of the, he was, before Jim Carrey, he was uh, one of the high priests of, of the um, set, one of the set churches or Temple of Set or Church of Satan in, in Hollywood. So um, De, De Niro is, is connected to the Nero, the Roman Nero bloodline, C- Caprio, Caprice that is connected to, they're all Roman, they're all d- descendants from uh, Roman bloodlines, this particular Roman bloodline, which um, didn't, are, aren't there, I mean, they aren't that, they aren't that. They're out for themselves, essentially. They're out for the. the they're trying to maintain the master slave um, 3D reality um, under the guise of saying they're saving the planet. Um, that 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 crew, that particular group, are all um, Habs. They're, they're descended from the Habsburg um, bloodline, which is um, the probably one of the strongest bloodlines of the Holy Roman Empire. So, if anyone wants to look up the Habsburgs, you'll find out that. Scorsese, De Niro, DiCaprio, and a number of others are all connected to that line. Oh. Are they yeah. Catholic? Um, well, it, it, it depends what you what you think Catholic really is. Catholic is really um, like female deity worship. It's it's a, if you, if you look at the the first three letters of Catholic, it's cat right so the it's it's worshiping of the um Egyptian, dark egyptian goddess um so catholic in the sense of w- w- the way that there's layers of all the religions are layered so the, the what the masses are told what what catholic catholicism is is not really what catholicism is um it's um it's an it's a, an, an, an egyptian um, mystery school uh religion in truth, so are they Catholic? Yes, but they know in 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 the in the truest sense, in the in the sense of in the core, the real sense of it, not the so the like I said, the masses get told the the story of Mary and um and you know that story, and then as as the higher up you go in the initiation, the more uh, the truth you get told about what the the modern day religions are about. Huh, interesting. Mm. I, w- I was. Listening to somebody um, said about um, James Casbolt sharing about Odin um, on um, one of the basis thing. I was listening to it last night. I, I do think he got confused and went off on one. But um, yeah. it's interesting, the um, Odin thing. He said Odin was was Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know if that's true. No, Odin was the father. So um, the son... Thor would be um, would be Christ would be would be the conceptually Christ. So you've got um, it's the same principle with Osiris and Horus. It's the, it's like uh, so Horus is Osiris reborn, and um, then Tammuz, which is um, the other son, and, and Christ would be the other. They're all the same. Thor is another one. Is, is they're the same, and they all have their opposing dark one, and um, the so the, and then the female deity. For, I guess for, for Christ would be Mary, uh, and then for the female deity, deity for Osiris and Horus would be Isis. Uh, for Tammuz, it would be Semiramis. And also Dion- Dionysus is also another um, sort of uh, Christ figure. It's interesting that we're doing this 
um, recording on the Spring Equinox, which is all those characters were, were, were uh, betrayed and then reborn on this day. So up to this point, up until yesterday, there was a betrayal, betrayal, and then on this, on the Spring Equinox, is a sort of a rebirth and, and of, of all those characters. But they're all the same thing. Um, and you could sort of you could align it with the sun. It, it sort of all aligns with the sun as well. The way the sun goes um, around, like on this day now, um, it's uh, the day with equal amount of hours of light and dark. So you have exactly twelve hours of light and exactly twelve hours of dark. And so the birth would be the winter solstice, and then the uh, the equinox would be the, uh, the the death, and then the rebirth. And then the summer, the summer solstice, which would be June 22nd, June 21st, June 22nd, would then be the ascension point where then they leave and then ascend to a higher dimension. But definitely all these characters are um, the same based on the same one. There's been a, there's been a lot of mixing and matching and messing around with it, though. They, they, they sort of sometimes switch them up to make sure, you know, people don't get get it too right but essentially um yeah so going back to that no o- odin odin would be the far odin would be representative of like kind of god the father and then thor would be his son in human form i suppose i suppose why why is it all mixed up why because if they've mixed it up on purpose because they don't want you to know exactly what is going on. Because if you, if we all, if we all knew exactly how these cycles work, this ties into life cycles and the 20 year cycles that we were talking about before, how everything loops and how time isn't lit or time doesn't exist anyway. But in, it, it, in this, in 3d, it, it, it's cyclical. So it loops around and loops around every 20 years. If, if the people, if the masses understood how it actually worked, we'd be more in control. We'd be, we'd, we'd have an understanding of how and when and where to do things. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I gave you that analogy before, but I, I um, the analogy is that it's sort of like a, um, a perfect 3D video game, and these the elite have got the rules and the book and they've got all the codes and the cheats for the book and then the mass or the goyim are then thrown out and left without anything and haven't don't know how the rules work of the game now if we did and if we knew that if you do certain things on certain times and you meet if we knew exactly how and when and where to do things then we would be more empowered and the whole point of this is to take away um the power from the masses so that the the tiny elite can have everything that they want to have for 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 one person to have a billion pounds it means uh, on the other side of the scale you have uh, um, an approximation of maybe a hundred thousand people have to live in poverty and suffering so uh the it's a uh, it, it has to balance out you can't have everybody having that kind of money in th- in, in 3d because it's a it's a balance you, you understand what you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah it's interesting about um the i think we were talking last time about creativity i mean i used to have a f- fantastic imagination at school and i <laughs> thought i was going to write thought i was going to write and i have been published yes but not novels in the way and I was watching that lovely um Jean Le Carre um spy thing that's on TV at the moment it's um called The Night Manager mm-hmm. and all of a sudden I burst into tears and my son said oh what are you crying for and because he was busy playing he doesn't like that kind of thing and he said what are you crying I said I, I wanted to do that I wanted to write like that and he said you're just not good enough you're not up to that are you <laughs> and it's like I felt I don't know that something something I mean almost like something's gone on, like some kind of creative energy has been grabbed out of somewhere. Do you know what I mean? I, I yeah, felt okay. that. Interesting. Like the, I saw an interview with Roseanne Barr, um, who's a very interesting character as well, because she's been through, um, she openly talks about going through uh, Project Monarch, and um, she supported Kathy O'Brien when Kathy O'Brien first came out and started speaking about that all those years ago, I think in the late 90s. Um, and then Ted Gunderson, the FBI, uh, the LA F- head of the FBI, uh, spe- I think, I'm not sure which unit he was head of, but um, I know now that Gunderson uh, wasn't good. 
I know a lot of people um, think that he is and was, but he wasn't. Oh. Um, uh, but Roseanne Barr was talking about, and this was on a, on a mainstream interview, how, and it sort of ties back into the phone hacking thing that you were talking about as well, uh-huh. that they have the ability um, through, so so the elites, calling them, call, I'm calling them the elites, um, the different factions throughout uh-huh. the world, they have their, um, they have their top, um, hybrid sort of uh, remote viewers and hybrid uh, spies. So they're able to, they don't have to hack your phone to get information. Mm-hmm. And Roseanne was saying how uh, she was able to, uh, that, that, that people were stealing her ideas from her head when she was asleep. Right. And uh, so that can be definitely, that definitely can be done. Mm-hmm. And um, with tech, with the co- they have a combination of technology and psychic ability. So they've sort of rounded that one off and, and uh, they have that perfected. That's it, it, interesting. You know, yeah. I did, um, I wrote a story about, based on my life and about the affair I had with the head of the real IRA. I won't say his name. Um, and all of a sudden a book by um, Helen Fielding, who wrote Bridget Jones' Diary, she had a book come out, I can't remember the title of it, um, but it was all about an orphan who ended up working for the Sunday Times, who ended up having a love affair with the head of Al-Qaeda. And it was like, I, I, I went mad. I was so angry because my book was already doing the rounds and I had an agent um, at the time and I phoned up her agent and said, you know, she's stolen, actually not even my idea, but it's my life story. And um, he then, Dylan Aitken it was, Dylan Aitken then ran um, my agent and... Um, said to him, you know, he was cross with me, knew I worked for the News of the World. And then my agent, um, which is um, a guy from Peter Fraser's Dunlop, pulled the plug on me and pulled the plug on the book. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, sorry, I missed that. So, that, so they, they sort of cut you off? They stopped it? or? or... Yeah, they cut me off. I mean, um, basically this guy, I won't say his name, but it was an agent from, a top agent from um, Peter Fraser's Dunlop. He's now moved to United Agents. He um, was dealing with my book. He picked yeah. it up and it, it was written about, you know, this love affair I have with the head of the real IRA. Yes. And um, he said, oh, it's great. And he, I was in Belfast working for the Sunday Times at the time. And he flew out from London to um, Dublin and um, he met me. We had dinner and he said, your book's fantastic. He said, you're, you're going to be a, a great thriller writer. He said, you're excited. He said, because I'm going to mentor you. And I'm like, yeah, I'm excited. And yeah. um, so he worked with me for the following six years on this particular book and um I was quite excited about it and then suddenly Bridget Jones um the the Helen Fielding and Bridget Jones diary a book came out about a woman who worked for the Sunday Times she used to be an orphan and she had a love affair um with the leader of Al-Qaeda and that's what the whole book was about and um it, it came out I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when I read it and um, I spoke to my agent yeah. and he said, oh, don't do anything about it. Don't do anything about it. And I said, oh, I, I, this is my book. You, you, there's no way that you're going to sell my book to a publisher when that's just come out. And um, I rang Gillian Aitken, who's her agent, and I said, you know, she stole, um, she stole my ideas. And he said, you can't say that because stories circulate. And I said, I can because yes. it's my actual life and I've lived it. So yeah. I said, where'd, where did she get the um, in, the story from? And mm. he said, well, she got it from someone in the private investigations industry. So I yeah. said, well, that's the industry I come from. And yeah. everybody knows my story. And I said, I'm quite... And next thing, he rang my agent and my agent dropped me, just cut me off. Six years, he, he worked on the book with me, putting in work, and he just dropped me. Yeah, it sounds like they stole. They totally stole it from you. Yeah, it does sound like that. They mm-hmm. have these. They have these chan- They have channelers. They have the best channelers working for them. And um, wh- so I think we talked about before. They have to. They have to sort of tell you what they're doing. It's a way for them to get around karma. They have to tell. tell it's a, sort of like a loophole. They have to tell you what they're doing before they do it. Otherwise, um, and then if you don't pick it up, then you know more for you. That means you. So they at least they they, they can say they told you, and then you didn't do anything about it. But they so they have channelers where they will put out the information, and they'll put out people's stories through video video games and through television and movie 
movies but what they will do in them is they will there is there is definitely um a light side uh if, we, if we're going to use that term quote unquote light there's a light side working from within the entertainment industry which is counteracting the dark with their movies so um the dark will maybe put a movie out with a certain character in it and then portray that character as negative and uh, uh, maybe cowardly or, or um, uh, whatever. And then maybe a, a, another studio will put out a movie using a, a similar archetype in that movie, but then um, putting it in the correct way. So there's, there's like a battle in the entertainment industry within Hollywood because they know that, I mean, Hollywood comes from the word holy wood, and it's it's basically a, a magic wand. So the, and it's the wand of illusion. So uh, that them I think we talked about before, knowing that the subconscious then creates the physical reality around us. If you can have um, enough, if you can get enough people um, to believe in a story that's put out, it doesn't matter if you th if they think it's fantasy or not, because the subconscious is the conscious mind is picking up the outside, the sort of like the surface story, and then the subconscious is picking up what the true message is of what they're trying to put out, and so. There, there, there's countering going on. So one movie will come out and, it, and say, say, say 100 million people watch the movie and then that's embedded into the subconscious. And then slowly those, those 100 million people who've watched the movie will, without knowing it, start manifesting the uh, parts of the movie or bits and pieces, clips of the movie into real life. So to counter that, other studios will put a movie out um, which will switch it up and put it the other way around to try and sway. It's all about taking it's, it's, it's like I said, it's about using the masses to create because they can't create. And uh, there isn't any better. There is, there's no other better way apart from perhaps music than movies to create the reality. This because so many people from it's, it's a universal thing. It's the only thing that um, everybody from every country watches or, or gets in, not watches, gets involved in. You know, a movie star, you can be said um, that, you know, what, whatever country um, will be known in a country that's 10,000 miles away or, or, or known in, in 500 countries across the planet. Um, so um, embedding that way... Um, is, is the the most efficient way to create a false reality. I'm just trying to make a point. So, sorry, showing that within the studios, there's also there is also a light group that is trying to stop what's going on as well. Does that making sense to you? Yeah, it's interesting. How how do so so have the rest of us had our creativity? Um, I just felt when I was watching the show that I'd had my creativity. I don't know if you mean the masses have had it. I, I felt that mine had been, um, but then I had Monarch um, done on me at my um, Vatican run orphanage. So, you know, maybe it was taken away then, but I just felt almost like I was in disabled calipers and someone, as I was watching it, and I got that feeling when I was watching that Seth MacFarlane guy, almost like, almost like, yeah, we, we've had it sort of taken. Drained. There's yeah, they've sort of drained. Uh, I mean, but the thing, the thing is, um, you can always replenish it. I mean, it's 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 it, you're, the, the the real the human beings that are here. Um, that are, we we have a self-sustained core. It's just um, they have. Because of the, the mentality of this particular consciousness, this vampiric consciousness on this planet, they they will drain and drain and drain and drain until till the very last point, until there's almost almost nothing left. They don't want everyone to die. They don't because they then then they they would have no way to create after that. So, oh. but they do sort of take just you know just until the last drop and then leave it and then it replenishes itself. There has to to be a period of time when um, we then regenerate again, and and then they use it again. Um, because so so, and I, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine as well, and I was thinking about the the global population and how many people we're told are on the planet, and so we're told there's over you know I, I think just over seven seven billion people on the planet, and I was I've been questioning if that's a correct amount 
if that really is the amount of people on the planet. Uh, um, because, you know, you, you, you drive across um, America and there is just so, so much space where there is literally nothing, nothing at all. And I think the population of America is something like 300, 300 million, close to 300 million, 350, something like that, I think. And I, I was I just been just, just a thought, just been questioning um, really what the truth is about the actual, the actual global population. And there are certainly a number of empty vessels walking around on this planet who are just there as sort of chess pieces to move particular people who they want to manipulate into certain positions. And um, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. My mind's just going off on a tangent. But the the eyes always kind of give that away, sort of like dead, empty eyes. But they're, you know, you know, cloning is 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 very real. And uh, I don't know why people would think, you know, it, it, that cloning wouldn't be real if if you can clone a sheep, which they've said that you can clone a sheep, and that's been done. And um, it's the same exact same principle. Um, why would people wouldn't think that humans are being cloned as well? Um, anyway, um, the, the, the like cloned beings don't have that core central creative ability. They're just there as like pawns or chess pieces, like I said, just to uh, manipulate and move certain people around um, in certain spots. But um, creative energy, yeah, I mean, it seems to me, it seems to me like it's lacking at the moment. I mean, um, we're repeating the same thing over over again. There's no new the new music. Any of the new music that comes out, um, they're using loop and the same even riffs as they did 20, 30, 40 years ago. And any of the raw, real, like new creative music doesn't get, it doesn't ever hit mainstream. It's yeah. repressed. Because I think when you when 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 human beings hear real raw creativity in music or in any of the artistic fields, oh. it inspires them yeah. to then go on and create themselves, oh, oh. and they definitely don't want that to happen. So to to the, the the music industry and the entertainment industry has become more and more and more digitized, and digitized is analog and binary con con binary concepts, and that is non creative. That's ritualistic and ri and, and and that, that what, you know, rituals are, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with rituals because they can be very grounding and you know and we all do everybody does rituals every day. I mean, everyone brushes their teeth, puts their socks on or whatever, and you know, or, or has coffee, or whatever. It's a ritual and it can be very grounding. But what ritual does do is stunt um, explosive creativity and and um, and. Uh, fresh new ideas it sort of stops it and so there is a a very concerted effort to stunt any raw creativity from people and the perfect way to do that would be to introduce um digital um digitize everything because like i said it's it's, it's analog and it's it's non it's non um it's it's repetitive it's it's repetitive rather than heart creation so they they want to yeah. they want to yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. no no so, you got, you yeah i'm getting a, i'm getting a bell moment now because actually there's nothing there's nothing on tv anymore yes <laughs> there's nothing on tv that has that explosive heart centered yeah. creativity and watching that lecar thing um john lecar of course he's wrote his his stuff decades ago it's got that it's got it in it i mean literally i was watching it and i felt myself be completely and utterly inspired it literally tripped me off the settee because it was true creativity and you could feel it and um yeah it's it's just yeah. it's just been sucked away it's been yes. sucked away isn't it and i haven't got access to that i used to have it and i don't have it anymore and, and i kind you of feel can dead have it again. You what can it again how's you, that then you, how's that then um yeah it, it would be about re i mean reconnecting with self um mm -hmm. nothing nothing ever really disappears nothing ever nothing's ever really gone um it's only has the illusion of being gone there's never really any separation from anything to anyone it's only the illusion of separation um so Anything that you ever have once had, you can always have again. It's just you only think that you don't have it. Oh, I, um, I don't mean to get too um, esoteric with you on that one. Um, it, it, it's um, 
How, so the question is, how would you get it back again? Yeah, is it linked with you were saying about? Um... Well, you know, writers people get writer's block, don't they? And then oh. creative block when they're doing things and they think, oh, I, I can't, you know, I, I can't get any, I can't think of anything anymore, I can't paint anymore, I can't do anything. And um, there there could be a number of reasons for it. Um, one could be that um, if you're going in the right direction, I mean, they, anybody who has. Um, talent high talent um that has the possibility or potential to change the world for the better um which which essentially means inspiring others mm. if you inspire others in a real way in a real raw way by showing that you are doing it, people get inspired very quickly you know if, if somebody sees somebody doing something that is um you know even if it's small something that is that that is different something that is different then that then that, that inspires that inspires people to do it so they watch people and they know you know everybody is tracked from birth through sound and and they know uh you know they have um all the doc documents and all the uh, they have full understanding of who we were before we were this person now so they so all the people who who've done things in other lives um are known and tracked in this lifetime so if so they they that's where the targeted targeted individual thing comes from the people who are targeted are not randomly targeted they're not like okay we're going to go through a book and we're going to phone book and pick this guy and we're going to target this guy people who are targeted are targeted because they are a threat to the system that's put in place at the moment so um as soon so, so then uh, to 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 keep their life in chaos would be a way to stop them from being able to perhaps complete the mission or the reason that they came here in the first place. Oh. So if if somebody who um, start if somebody starts to get on the right track and starts to starts to create and do the thing that they're supposed to do, then they will uh, maybe step in using uh, as all the number. So many different ways that they can do to block. They can put, they can um, sort of inject different people into their lives um, that will take them off on, onto a tangent and away from what they're doing. They can use electronic equipment to do that. Um, anybody who starts to um, then, if and if you continue and you start to thrive and 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 get bigger that way, then they will then often offer deals so that they want you to sell out. And then um, offer you material things, material, you know, so goods. And it's the ones that haven't sold out that are the biggest threat to this mm, matrix system that is that is crumbling as we speak at the moment. And the 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 ones that are trying to hold it together are sort of panicking at the moment because um, there isn't anything they can do about it coming apart it is going to cut this this system of control is going to come apart but they want to be able to implement their new system before we realize that we've all been duped our whole lives so there's they're going to there's a window of opportunity in between the collapsing of the old and the building and the implementation of the new where we can go hey stop this doesn't this doesn't we don't need to continue this anymore and literally the power is in all of our hands it's not it's not theirs and that's why they're scared they live in fear vibration they live in fear vibration all the time you don't need to control if anybody who has the need to control others is in a fear state if oh. you have to control somebody else you're in a fear state and they essentially are in uh constantly if you if you if you have to surveil somebody if you have to put cameras up then you're frightened of something aren't you mm. it would seem that if you're watching people all the time it means you're scared and they uh, the amount of cameras that are up everywhere is an indication of their increasing fear that they are going to lose the power that they've had for so many thousands of years they don't want to give up this the power they've had they don't want to give up the lifestyles that they've had um incarnating over and over and over again into like lavish lives so they what this window that's going to open and it's 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 sort of pretty close now because the old system is definitely collapsing um, um, it, they want to try, like I said, implement their new system as fast as possible. Hmm. It's interesting. As you were saying that, I was thinking, um, I was thinking that, um, the, 
John Le Carr thing last last night. Well, it's it's recurring. It's on the BBC. They're playing it. Uh, yeah. He covered um, he covered those various higher aspects. Like there was one part <clears throat> where um, the the gun dealer. There's an arms dealer in it called Richard Roper, and Roper says. Um, the key to being, he's talking to the good guy, the so-called good guy, and he's talking about um, being a man. And he said, do you feel that you're a man? First of all, he uses he uses an interesting phrase as well, which is what Aquino used to me. He asks the good guy who's trying to spy on him um, for MI6, what do you want? And the good guy says, oh, I just want to get out of here. And he goes, no, 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 what do you want? So he asks him that big question and then he says to him on the on the beach, he says, um, what do you think makes a man? And um, the other guy says, oh, I don't really know. And he says, you know, what? I, th- I when I first became a man was when I realized that the whole world was rotten. And then I realized I had to capitalize on the rotten. Uh, and I thought that mm. was, you know, th- that was very interesting and they had another guy they showed that mi6 being being bad was letting um again showing the establishment is rotten was letting this arms dealer go ahead because he um was dealing with people that were very powerful um in the arab countries and other countries so they let him go ahead and they came to this like little offshoot of mi6 this guy who was trying to do the good thing and they said to him you need to expose who your undercover man is and he said Mm -hmm. no 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 I'm not going to do that and then he was walking down the street and the man came up to him and he said um, from the main body of MI6 he said an uncle of yours could die and leave you a hell of a lot of money and the guy said no I'm sorry I'm not going to I know what you're saying I'm Mm going to ignore what you said so there there's the temptation come in and I thought he's like painting a whole load of really profound, um, you know, profound. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Yeah, it's yeah. Like it. I don't, I don't agree that the the whole world is rotten, though. I have um, a huge belief in human beings, and I believe that um, uh, human beings have the potential and uh, to change all of this. Um, it's just, it's only like a breath away from being able to change all of it. And, um, and that's going back to the thing that that's why the surveillance and that's why they're putting so much pressure on now um, to put in the the new system is because they know that it's only a thought away to change all of this. Um, thought created this system in the first place. We are, our minds were manipulated to create this false reality. So um, it would only take a thought to change the re- the reality that we're in now. Um, you were saying about the um, we're the Goyem and we don't have the um, handbook and the rules of the game and yeah. the when and the where. I mean, where do we get that handbook from, and where do how do we know the when and the where? I mean, you know. Hold on one second. Okay, sure. I don't think there is a there is a handbook per se like that. Um, I think that all the information is already contained within the cells and in the D, uh, within not DNA because DNA is uh, everyone talks about DNA all the time and how um, how important it is and it is important and it is like the construct of the the physical body and and the eye color and and how how we are and everything. But you can change your DNA. That you can change it by DNA can be changed through sound. Um, but anyway, the handbook, um, well, I mean, it's it, the information is out there. If you look at the Emerald Tablets, Thoth's Emerald, Thoth's Emerald Tablets, all the information is already in there. Um, uh, like the the Babylonian uh, mystery school religions and the uh, the Greek mystery school religions and the Egyptian mystery school religions, the information is out there, um, but... It's also contained within. So, you know, the with the, I would suggest that people have a look at the Emerald Tablets. They're, they're an incredible read. And it explains exactly sort of what's happened over the last 13,000 years and, and how this sort of it's taken. It's taken them. It shows the resilience of human beings because, um, 
you know, it, it, they haven't been able to put, completely contain all of us. It's still, you know, 13,000 years later and they still haven't been able to do it. And it's the human heart that's been able to keep them, fr them from being able to do it. Um, so even without the information and even without the rule book, we, the, the human heart is still surviving and striving and uh, has the potential uh, at any point to switch this over and change it over. It's just... So, so to look for it, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's in it's in the Emerald Tablets. The, the, yeah, I mean, yes, that, that's one place to look for it. Yeah, I mean, the, I, you can't just say it's in one spot. It's, uh, you can't say it's here um, because there's lots of different. You and you can find information. It's it's sort of scattered around in all different places. Maybe you could watch a certain t television program and find some information in there. Maybe then you could read another book and find some information there and piece it together. I, I did an exercise where I got like a, a huge piece of paper and I, I just spent a week writing down. I put a central point. I put a circle in the center and I wrote down like uh, um, I wrote down ideas. And then I put sort of lines coming off. And then throughout that week, I, I wrote down in bubbles coming off the center thing, things that had happened to me or things that I had seen or movies that I'd seen or people that had come into my life or incidents that had happened. And I put them, I wrote them down. And then um, over that week, two weeks, three weeks, I looked and then I started seeing a pattern forming. And I could start then seeing um, why that, you know, why and how things happen. And you can sort of, you don't, ha you don't even have to go to any of the, the mystery school stuff. I mean, you can, and, 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 but if you don't have to, like the, the, the world around you is screaming, screaming the truth to you all the time. It's just whether or not you're, you're picking it up. So a good way to do that would be to um, start logging interesting coincidences that happen to you um, throughout your daily life and then sort of putting them down and then um, tying them together. And then you'll find, you sort of find out more about yourself. The more you know about your true self, because most of us are hiding from who we really are. Most of us, most of us are, uh, have, carry a lot of shame around and uh, um, and guilt for certain things that have happened in our lives. And the shame and the guilt are the the lowest vibrational states you can be in, and they sort of block you from knowing who you really are. And so this whole this whole system is 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 being held together by making sure that people don't know who they really are. So finding out who you really are by looking at coincidences and synchronicities that happen in your life is a, is a, is a good start. Or go and look up, um, to put in and, and search for a mystery school information and uh, um, look that way. It's just for me, now where I am, I spent so long looking externally for answers. Um, I don't do that anymore. I do it um, by going inside of myself or, or looking at just the subtleties of life that go on around me. Just oh. maybe I'll pass somebody in the street and they will have um, a, a T-shirt with, with something written on it. And that will tie into uh, a commercial that I'd seen two hours ago. So I'll log that and log that. And then you can sort of bring pieces of the puzzle together. And that way I found um, that I learned a thousand times more than I did sitting down reading, you know, another hundred books. Oh. It's interesting, as you were saying that, I remember when I first um, first saw you, and then I think we spoke on Facebook PM for, for a little bit, and I was talking to um, Miles Johnson about you, and um, I said I get a weird feeling around him that I met him uh, years ago when I was a kid, but I, I'm older than you, so I That's can't have done... What? That's interesting. Yeah, but I did have it, and I, he, Mars said, you know the way he is. He said, "Oh, um, what, what, what is it?" And I said, "Well, it's it. I was sitting next to him, coloring in, and we were drawing these um, men with hoods, hooded men, and um, he he was drawing the hooded men in black, and I said, you're not allowed to do that. You got to do them in rainbow colors, and you kept coloring in in black, really dark." And I said, you're not allowed to do that because you're going to get in trouble. And some they came and took you away. And, and it was weird when you were talking just now. I just mm. got a really strong picture of you drawing in colouring black. And I got a really strong urge to say to you, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. You've got to shut up. <laughs> it's interesting because I, 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 
I paint. I'm an I like I do. I'm an artist, and I use um like colors. That's like I'm I'm colorblind, but I use a massive array of colors. Colors is sort of my thing, so I don't really draw in black and white. So that sort of um is unusual because uh, all my artwork is um extremely colorful. Hmm. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is because I couldn't have met you at um, the Crusade of Rescue, which is where I grew up. Because you're that much um, younger. Yeah, you're younger. So yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 like I said, I, I'm, I'm an artist, but um, I don't draw in black and white. That's for sure. I've always sort of been obsessed with colours. Yeah. And... No, you were a kid. Yeah, you were a yeah. kid. You were a little boy. You were a little boy, and I don't know if you were younger than me, but you were. Um, I was sitting near you and you were a kid and um, mm -hmm. we were doing an exercise, but you were doing it wrong. Well, you actually, you were doing it right, <laughs> but it meant huh. that it, it meant that you were. I was. How, how did you know that I was doing it wrong? Or how, how did you know? How did you know that? Or did somebody say that I was doing it? Or no, uh, just by instinct. We were supposed okay. to. We were supposed to. Oh, we're going to break, Max, so we're just going to have three minutes if you want to grab a coffee and we'll okay. come back to that. All right, sounds good. See you in a few minutes, folks. Okay. Okay.